Algebra 3 Trig, Chapter 7, Section 4, Sum and Difference Formulas. Okay, these is, this is a summary of our sum and difference formulas. Uh, this is how you work a problem where you have the sine, cosine, or tangent of two angles that are being added together or subtracted from each other. This will allow you to find the sine, cosine, tangent of some angles that they themselves are not special angles, but they are the sum or difference of special angles. Uh, usually when we use these, we're going to be finding exact values, which means we're not going to be putting it in our calculator. We're going to be using the unit circle. You do not need to memorize these. They will be provided to you on a formula sheet. Okay, here's an example. You're going to use the sum formula for cosine to find the one on the left, and you're going to just... Um, substituting values for the one on the right for part B. The point of this is to show you that these two are not the same thing. So pause the recording, give them a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, as you can see, using the sum formula for cosine, we end up with square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. But part B, just straight substituting, we have the square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. So it is important that you use the formula and not try to separate it like on part B. Now we're going to find the exact value of the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle. And here we've actually shown you how to break 11 pi over 12 down into 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Um, a really easy thing to do with this is to write down um, your special angles, the pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, pi... Uh, maybe even some of the higher ones, some of the multiples of those, change them to have the denominator of the angle you're looking for. In this case, change them to have a denominator of 12, and then you'll be able to figure out which ones combined will give you what you need. 3 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 12, and pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12. 9 plus 2 is 11. All right, pause the recording, use the uh, sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, tangent, and give this a try, then resume to check your answer. Okay, you can see here where we've used those formulas. Now, uh, they've actually factored out on the sine and the cosine, that square root of 2 over 4. You don't need to do that. Uh, I would be fine if you left it for um, the sine, leave it as square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4, and for the cosine, leave it as negative square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. That is perfectly fine uh, if you leave it that way. We're using degrees, and degrees are a lot easier to think of what, what do I know on the unit circle that's going to give me that when I add or subtract. So I've shown you here, break down 105 as 60 plus 45. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. And here again, they have factored out the square root of 2 over 4 for the sine and cosine. You do not need to do that. You can leave it as uh, for sine square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4, and for cosine square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. Now here I haven't shown you how to break it down, but remember what I said. Convert your special angles to having denominators of 12. That's going to let you figure out what to combine to get 13 pi over 12. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, so if we use 3 pi over 4, that would be 9 pi over 12, and pi over 3 would be 4 pi over 12. 9 plus 4 is 13, so that gives us 13 pi over 12. And then again, you see here it's all worked out. And as I've said before, you don't need to factor out um, that square root of 2 over 4 like they did for sine and cosine. Okay, here's another example. Come up with a way to make 285 using our special angles. Give this problem a try. Resume the recording to check your answer when you're done. And here we go, uh, 225 plus 60. Now, there, there's a lot of times more than one right answer or one right way to combine them. There will only be one correct answer. Um, but sometimes there's more than one right way to combine 
um, special angles in order to get what you're after. So even if you chose another way that uses special angles, you should still end up with the same answers. Okay, this time what we have is essentially the right-hand side of the equation. We need to figure out which equation matches with sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. So pause the recording, look at your formulas, see which one this matches, write the answer, resume to check your answer. Okay, this matches with the sine of A minus B. So the sine of 3 minus 1.2 it's the sine of 1.8, and that's all they wanted you to do with that. Now try this one for tangent. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. This is the tangent of the difference of two angles. So 45 minus 30 is 15. The answer is the tangent of 15 degrees. Now you're going to find the exact value of the expression. So again, we're kind of working our way backwards, but this time instead of leaving it as sine of the angle or cosine of the angle, you're going to give the actual value. Pause the recording, give these a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, for the one on the left, um, this is the sine of the sum of two angles. So we're going to add pi over 12 plus pi over 4, and that gives us pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. For the one on the right, this is the difference of two angles, the tangent of the difference. So we're going to do 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, which is um, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. The tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. Now we're going to find the exact trigonometric expression given that u is 5 thirteenths, sine of u is 5 thirteenths, and cosine of v is negative 3 fifths. What you want to do is draw two, two triangles. For one triangle, label an angle u, then label the opposite in the hypotenuse as 5 and 13 and find the missing side. Draw another right triangle, label an angle v, and then designate the, um, the adjacent as negative 3 and the hypotenuse is 5 and find your missing side. Then you can put those values into these expressions. You can use the formulas and find the answers. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, and you see the values here, put into the formulas. This one is similar, although it looks a little confusing. Again, you're going to draw two triangles. Uh, one of them you're going to use with this arc sine of x, so you might want to give them two different names, like maybe call the arc sine of x a and the arc cosine of x b or, or whatever. But draw a triangle, pick an angle, and label the opposite as x and the hypotenuse as 1. Draw another triangle, label an angle as the angle you're using, and draw um, label the adjacent and the hypotenuse as x and 1, and then find the missing side on each. And then you can use the uh, formula for the sine of the sum of two angles in order to solve this. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. So you see our two triangles and how we labeled them and found the missing side. And it's kind of weird the way they wrote it here, but um, the sine of the arc sine of x is going to be x. This cosine of the arc cosine of x is also going to be x. The sine of the arc cosine of x is going to be 1 uh, square root of 1 minus x squared. And the cosine of the arc sine of x is also square root of 1 minus x squared. When you multiply those together, the square roots cancel. <coughs> and then the x squareds go away and we end up with 1. All right, we're going to work on proving the identity. Now, uh, we know these are, we know that the one on the left is true. What you're going to use is the uh, formula for the sine of the difference of two angles and show that that's true. Um, you're going to do pretty much the same thing on the right also. Just use the difference and the sum formulas. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay. 
Okay, for the one on the left, you can see how we've used the formula for the sine of the difference of two numbers. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So all we're left with is cosine. For the one on the right, again, we're putting uh, this into the formula. We use the uh, cosine of the difference there. And then we use the sine of the sum. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The sine of pi is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1 and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we have some things drop out. We're left with negative cosine plus cosine, and that is 0. Okay, now we're going to solve these using our addition and our subtraction properties. So pause the recording, put the formulas in there, give this a try, resume the recording to check your answer. Again, using our formulas uh, and putting in the numbers that we know for pi, we uh, put in negative 1 for cosine pi and 0 for sine of pi. We end up with negative 2 sine x plus 1, and then we solve as we've learned how to, so that the sine of x is 1 half, which would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. For the problem on the right, we're going to use the formulas, and then we're going to go ahead and evaluate the um, various functions at pi. The tangent of pi is 0, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. The sine of pi is 0. So putting all those in, it reduces down to the tangent of x minus 2 sine x. What they did here is they added 2 sine x, and they changed to both sides, and they changed tangent x to sine over cosine. This will allow you to cross multiply. Then you can uh, subtract the 2 cosine x from both sides. Factor out the sine of x, and then you have uh, sine of x times 1 minus 2 cosine x equals 0. So the sine of x equals 0, or the cosine is 1 half. That gives you 0 in pi, and pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3.